When you're working on a new digital product, whether it is launching a new startup or releasing a new product as part of a large public sector or corporate organization, we always usually recommend following agile delivery. Those agile delivery methods encourage teams to build very quickly and to test what, what they've built and iterate the work based on regular feedback. And there is a great four-step process to follow to ensure that you can continually get the right input and validate the decisions throughout from um, the general ideas all the way to the final product. And it starts with the discovery, the alpha, then the beta phase, all the way to go live. So let's get into more details about those four steps. Hey, welcome to this new edition of Digital Blitz, your short brief on everything UX, tech and compliance. I'm Sylvain Reiter and I'm here to help you succeed in digital by delivering better experiences for your team and your customers. When you apply agile delivery methods, you gather the requirements, you plan, you design, you build, you test pretty much at the same time. However, you cannot go straight into building a product with real code and database from, from day one, just with an idea. You need to validate the, the concept and, and the business case. And for that, you need a process to take it one step at a time and gradually progress towards a solution. And this is where the four step of Agile really helps. And it guarantees pretty much that whatever product or service you create will be useful to your end users. So you need to start small, just with a concept in the discovery phase. This is where you need to understand the actual problem you are trying to solve and how it fits in the wider ecosystem. You need to remove all the assumptions and understand the risks very early on because what you think people might want might not be accurate. So during discovery, you need to confirm that you can actually solve that problem. And you can start producing low fidelity user journeys and understand again the whole end-to-end -end process and the risk and the opportunities. And the goal is to generate a list of ideas that you can test in the next phase. And this is when you are ready to move to the alpha phase. You need to take the findings from discovery and begin to experiment with potential solutions. The goal is to test many of those different ideas very rapidly and you can usually focus on the riskiest first. You need to see what works and what needs throwing away. So at that stage, it's still easy and cost effective to do. So you do that through higher fidelity prototype that you can put in the hands of real users. You can start looking at the technological constraint as well and how the entire ID and the whole picture can start to take shape. Then, once you have that, you can move to the beta phase. Once you have a better idea of what the product is going to look like, and you can start building the real thing, an actual working software in beta. You need to plan how your service will integrate with or replace existing services. And this is when you start, as I said, building uh, an actual software. But you can still use low code or no code tools to simplify uh, some of the integration steps, for example. But you need to start playing with real data through uh, the end-to-end, -end, keeping it secure at all times, obviously. This is usually the longest phase as you keep iterating over a few sprints once you reach a minimum viable product, you might decide to soft launch in a private beta just with a few selected users. I've seen some of our clients or public sector organization move to a public beta where you label it as beta so the customer know that it's not the finished article, but it is a working version that is better than what was there before. It helps the users. Once you have enough feedback to show that your service works for your users and meets all their needs, it's time to go live. You can start thinking about discontinuing the previous service. 
there are plenty of things to consider for such migration, like the final security and accessibility audits, the quality assurance and sign off. You're going to monitor all the KPIs, but if you reach there, it's a big day, so congratulations. However, once it's live, the process doesn't stop. It never stops because you continually need to track user activity and gather feedback to learn and improve your product or service. This is the only way to ensure that it continues to meet the ever-changing and evolving user needs. So that's it for today. If you're considering launching a new digital product or service and need help with this agile process implementation, leave me some comments below or get in touch. You can watch more videos about digital discovery on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe to keep learning with me and grow your career in digital. Until next time, stay safe and see you soon.